Greetings and salutations. I'm back down the shed again with our constant companion, the pool pump. I came down a little bit earlier than normal and I wanted to start doing some cleanup and prep on these mechlets. So this is one of those ones where the paint went really crappily. So I started cleaning. I got to about this stage after about an hour. Varnishes are quite resilient. They're kind of designed to be. I believe this is a polyurethane one as well. I, I tend to go for the polyurethanes because you can kind of do all funky stuff with them. Like they are very resilient to solvents and such. So that's why cleaning them is a pain in the ass. Uh, you know, I can actually protect like a, a silver coat and then when I add a black coat on there I can just use a bit of terps and a cotton bud to score those lines. I mean, it's, it makes it look more like a natural weathering than just going over it with a pen. So yeah, it gets very, very frustrating trying to clean something like this where the, the varnish has gone completely to hell and you need to clean that shit off. Just leaves an absolute mess. So I'll continue on with that a bit later. I've... However, what I want to try and get done today, because I just can't get this out of my head, is I want to get these, at least I want to get the structure done on these. Now, of course, there's a lot of logistical issues. I want to build something probably about as wide as my hand. Since when it goes on the costume, it, it's it won. I want it to look a bit bigger. Now, I could use reference material, but to be brutally honest, I'm kind of winging this. And this is something I love to try to talk about. How much accuracy do you want to get? This kind of ties into the importance of the cosplay. Sometimes, especially if you're on a budget, what you want to do is to get the feel and the look. You're not necessarily trying to get the exact shape and detail. For the most part, no one's really going to notice and no one's really going to care. This is something I always bring up with Ghostbusters Proton Packs is literally you can have a box on your back and a vacuum cleaner handle and people recognize your Ghostbusters. That's pretty much what Stranger Things did. I, I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to make this bigger. Because now looking at it, I've got to think of anything I build on top of this has to still be able to move and be uninterruptible in these two positions. If I'm gonna build something around this claw, it needs to kind of be building up around there and there. I wanna try and extend it out a bit. So it probably will look a bit tiny if it's trying to replicate a hand. Now, I'm not sure how I'm gonna deal with this. So I mean, might have to form something around that or I might just leave it open. I'm still figuring out the shapes and it. I'm probably just gonna, maybe I'm thinking of making it something a bit like that. So it's essentially a more angular piece, less organic. What I'm gonna to use to build this is this stuff. It's um, PVC foam core or foam board or PVC foam sheets. So if you look at the actual thing, you can get this from Bunnings. Your store might not have it. I get this from the Joondalup store. So I know it's there. It's not exactly cheap. Now, it's probably too costly for, make the, for me to make the entire costume out of this. For things like hands and stuff like that, I can just get a piece like this. I can just cut the design out. The great thing about this is that it cuts very easily. This is two mil and this is three mil. Now, three mil is a tough bast. I'm gonna build a shell and probably use that to add some support. That's probably the most I'm gonna use that for. Now, this stuff, you can, you can draw on it, you can as you can see, I've used Sharpies and you can even because it's white, obviously you can use a pen on the black stuff, we've got white pens. You can cut it with a knife, uh, a good sharp scalpel will do it, or you can use a, like a hobby knife. You can even just score it and snap it. I'm a bit dubious about that, to be honest, mostly because I've had times in the past where it's just proper styrene can snap it very easily. A lot, of, a lot of prop builders recommend it. This is roughly the equivalent of a styrene we can get over here. It's also quite flexible. You can drop it on the ground. You can heat gun it, bend it into place and it'll stick. Again, it's very much like your foam matting and stuff like that, but it's like highly compressed. But one thing I like doing with it is scoring it on the back, giving a little bit of channel and then bending it using a bit of heat. Don't wanna to go too far, especially with the two mil. Give it a bit of heat. You can get some really nice tight angles on it. So I'm probably gonna end up using that to get that 90 degree and it'll give it a, a somewhat curve. And of course, because this is foam, once it's all been glued together, you can 
spot fill it and all that and you can sand it and file it and stuff like that so it's a very versatile material for building with at least because i've only got so much of this and literally this is all i've got it's because i've essentially got to build two halves so and i've got to build so essentially i've got to feel, build four pieces so and each one is going to be essentially mirrored now looking at this my attach points are clearly going to be here, 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 here on probably the other side. Those two points are different. And I, I want to try and keep the circle. That's probably the bit I don't want to touch at all in regards to gluing because it's a moving part. I'm going to have to try and get some clearance of that. So if I build a shell that extends out beyond that, as long as I've got attachment points on here, I can maybe hide a bit of that. Um, who knows this is probably not something that's going to be done in a day but i thought I'd at least give you a little small bit of update plus i wanted to say you know cleaning this stuff is not that easy let's get to it So as you can see, I've pretty much got what I kind of want out of it. I mean, I haven't, you know, just because I'm run out of paper, I just kind of figured out the width that I want, which is about as wide as my hand, about 100 mil. Now, these are just guidelines. I haven't even taken into account, you know, the material measurements and stuff like that. I'm, I'm just going to kind of freehand it. I do want to kind of keep them universal. Now, I'm debating about that inner part. It's tempting to just have it as two solid pieces. That would also help, you know, probably detract people from trying to like, I don't know, put stuff in my hand or anything like that. But I do have a bit of poly pipe that that will fit around relatively easily. But will um, essentially allow me to have an inner part. Gluing it onto there might help with the structure a little bit. I mean, this needs to be filed down a bit to make it a bit more smoother. I just unscrewed one screw and managed to pop all them out. And yeah, they're not crucial, so I might just uh, put them aside. I could probably even use these as some of the internal supports, but that's something to be uh, looked at later. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to build all these today. I'm probably going to try and build one just as a solid piece, or at least as a solid bit without the internal cup and see how I like that if I'm not too keen on that I might make another one with that indent now because of the structure of this trying to extend it out it's gonna it end up being about there so if I do have this area open it might look a little bit crap so I might just make it as just one solid piece now the other thing I've got to figure out is because that is going to extend up there the only point of contact at this point is probably going to be there and there. It might require some actual internal structure to hold it all together. 
I really, especially if this is going to be something that's going to move, I don't want to risk it crunching in too much or I don't want to risk it flying about too much. So it's probably going to be something where I'm going to have to extend these out just to give it something to pinch onto when I, as it's glued together. Yeah, the more structurally stable, the more it's not going to fly apart uh, from doing that too much. But we shall see. I might just do one. I might just feel myself cutting out one and trying to build one. And it's going to be a prototype and we'll see how it turns out. Now, I don't have a particularly good idea of how the round is. Because I'm building outside of that, I don't necessarily need to attach anything to that. So the supports will come out from there. So what I might do is I might just extend that drawing down a bit further, extend those two lines. But I'm actually tempted to keep it as as a flat curve there, because you've got to remember, as that pulls apart, anything that extends past there is going to interrupt. I might actually just kind of bring it to like a line line. It, it's stuff to figure out. So let's get cutting. So, this is my rough prototype, as you can see some of the 
things stick out a little bit that's fine i mean i'm scratch building this i mean as much as i've got measurements i'm still scratch building this what i haven't done yet is to see how well this is going to fit on this so if i just put that on there that's pretty much how it's going to look if i move it like that obviously i haven't got the front plate on this yet so that's pretty much how it's gonna how it's gonna look now that's the other thing i needed to worry about is how is that gonna sit on there and that's gonna be fine so what i might do is just i could probably just put it on the belt center just knock it down plate goes on but that'll be done last because that will be the thing i do after i worked on all this internal structure yeah that looks like it's going to be the business now i've only cut out enough for one claw so in future i might just because these are good i can just use as a template so just put them down just draw it out cut it out so i need four more of these and three more of these then i'll need the four plates that's the one fun thing about using old scrap it's sometimes you just find some weird stuff i think that's the boot polish from the uh Mario boots, yeah. The old polish, not the good polish. Yeah, it's gonna, I reckon that's gonna come on really good. Uh, yeah, I'll round down these corners, my bog filler. Cause that's the good thing is I can always just round a lot of this stuff out with the file and sand it down, bog filler, all that type of stuff. So I might make the coverings. Cause as you can see at this moment, that's just, that's the only bit that's gonna attach onto that. So what I really want to do is I wanna, I want to at least get something that's going to guarantee that it's going to be a bit more involved. I'll probably also grab a file, file that down, rough it up, give it something more purchase on there, rough up the insides of this. And so when I do go crazy with the glue, I'll just have something to grip onto. Should hopefully look like a really, really interesting claw. Pro and film the rest of this. Oh, you know, repetitive work. You know, you've got to make basically four of these. So I'll probably next video, I'll probably have done all this and I'll skip the head to when I do maybe the final assembly or I'll have gotten to the point where I'm going to do the prep and paint. We'll see. Till next time, uh, like, share, subscribe and all the other stuff and I'll see you later.